Welcome to another unit in this SPSS course. This time I'm going to talk about how in the conjoint analysis for different attributes we can assign them different, let's call this scales or scale levels. What do I mean by this? Well, if we take a look, for example, at the attribute color here, we have the levels blue, black and red. That's relatively clear that this is more or less a nominal scale which is present here. We cannot say blue or red is more color than black, for example. So if we want to represent something like this in a conjoint analysis, we have to select here the type discrete, meaning I can assign them any value I want. He considers all of them differently. However, well, this is not the only case available to me. This is the default situation, so if I do not enter anything with factors here, he will automatically assume that all of this is discrete. But I also have the advantage of selecting two other types. The first other type we can see with price. While I have here three different price levels, 15, 18 and 20,000, I can assume that these prices are more or less on a line. So I could get different prices, 17,000, 21,000. All of this is theoretically possible for, well, let's say what my test people are willing to pay actually. So if I want to represent this linear nature of this price variable, I can use here the type linear. Well, here it's not linear, it's linear less because I have two sub options. I can talk about linear less and linear more. I use linear less if I assume that larger values of this attribute lead to lower marginal utilities. That's the case here. I assume if the car costs more, people are less willing, less interested in it. So that's why I use less here. If larger values would lead to a higher marginal utility, then I would use linear more. For example, more seats available, more other advantages available. This would mean linear more. That's the second possible part here. Then we have, well, another one or another two available, that's ideal and anti-ideal. That's always if I assume something like a quadratic relationship. Well, what's that, what does quadratic in this context mean? Well, I use this here on audio with the idea no audio equipment is one as a value, standard is two as a value, high class is three as a value. If for some reason my customers really don't like the standard version and they even prefer the no audio equipment version over the standard one, so in all of this the middle category is actually the worst one, meaning one and three both have higher marginal utilities than the two in the middle, I get something if I would draw this like a parabola opened upwards, so a classical normal parabola. If I want to represent something like this, like the middle values have the lowest marginal utilities, then I can use the type anti-ideal. If it would be the other way around, so if the middle values actually can be assumed to have much higher marginal utilities than the values on the left and the right, so the smallest and the largest values, then I would use ideal. So ideal, anti-ideal, that's for something of a, let's call this quadratic parabolic relationship of the values. And that's the four or three types available to us. The linear part is relatively important in the context of price attributes, if you're interested in particular in the next step to calculate marginal willingness to pay. However, 
we cannot simply apply the linear part here without considering the underlying values. What do I mean by this? Well, if I switch to my design file, here I see I assigned the prices values 1, 2, and 3. So for 15,000, I assigned it the value 1, for 18,000, the value 2, and for 20,000, the value 3. However, 1 is as far from the 2 than the 2 is from the 3. No problem there. But the 15,000 is further away from the 18,000 than the 18,000 from the 20,000. So I need to represent the structure underlying the values of this price of this linear variable by the values I assign them. So I could switch, say 1 is actually the 15,000, 3 is actually the 20,000. Well, this would actually not be so nice because I would have to use very large values giving me very small marginal utilities. So I could cut this down and simply say, well, instead of 15,000, I use 15. Instead of 20,000, I use 20. And I would do this then for all of them. It could work through this. This would work out pretty well, would actually lead to decent results to use. Sticking to the idea that price is on a linear scale. However, I can directly do one thing more, which makes it much easier to cal calculate later on the uh, marginal willingness to pay and also to interpret the values. I could select one of these prices as a base level. Well, usually it's a good idea to select the smallest price as base. So here, select the 15 as the base level. What does this mean in consequence? Well, for every value I have here, I will subtract these 15 so that the base level always has a value of zero. Meaning I start here with zero, minus 15 gives me, for all 20s gives me five, for all 18s gives me three, resulting in this overview. And that's actually a very interesting way because if now I run my conjoint analysis, let's do this here shortly, I will get my results, I will get my marginal utilities here in this context, and I see that the base level for the price has a marginal utility of zero. So I can always reference all the other values to this one directly by simply taking a look at these values. So as compared to the 15,000, 18,000 gives me minus 0.2. So it's less than the 18,000. 20,000 gives me minus 0.334. It's less than all the others. However, the really interesting aspect, if I now take a closer look here, I see that the relation 0 to minus 0.2 and minus 0.2 to minus 0.334 mirrors the relations from 15 to 18,000 and from 18 to 20,000. So this is actually the linear structure which is also given here with the original prices. And that's what I need to assure, else I will not have a linear structure in the outcome. This part with the it's also called centralizing. Makes sense to make them a bit more easier to interpret, but it will also make, which we will discuss in another unit, it a bit easier to calculate the marginal willingness to pay. Well, that's everything I wanted to mention here regarding the different, let's call this, scales for my attributes and how to actually assure that they work in the way I want them to. Well, as I said, this concludes this unit, so I hope you enjoyed it. I say goodbye and see you next time.